I'm joined now by Dr. Joel Nitzkin. He's a public health physician and a senior fellow in tobacco policy for the R Institute. So, doctor, first I want to get your thoughts on New York's push to target Chinese immigrants. Are public service announcements enough to get people to stop smoking? No, they are not. They're helpful as part of a, a larger program, but in and of themselves, they do relatively little good. There is no reason for anyone in this day and age to ever die of a smoking-related disease. Cigarettes kill a half to a third of consistent heavy smokers. If services aren't readily available from the health department, there are things that the community and individual smokers can do for themselves. The first thing is to simply quit. Most smokers who successfully quit just quit cold turkey. If the smoker is unable or unwilling to quit, or there are other factors driving them to smoke, we have another option that's been available in recent years. It's not perfect, it's not risk-free, but it's a whole lot better than combustible cigarettes. And that is e-cigarettes and related vapor devices. Now, the e-cigarettes that they sell in the convenience stores are not very good. If someone wants to get one that would really work, you really have to go to a vape shop and work with a person in that vape shop to get something that will work for you, for the individual smokers. So if the health department is unable to come through with a proper, fully functional uh, smoking cessation program, I would advise individual smokers in the Chinese community and the community itself to try to establish relationships with local vape shops, even see if you can open some Chinese language vape shops as a solution that will eliminate 95% of the risk and, of you potentially know, Dr. illness. And Dr. Niskin, that is an interesting point. Not sure if that's something they've considered yet. Uh, we do know that higher prices of cigarettes have been a deterrent in some cases to some extent, but uh, for many of these people, price is, an, is not an issue. So how difficult is it to change a culture or a mentality of smoking that's really been around for generations? Well, you have to understand the culture and what's driving it. I would think that in the Chinese community that the Chinese men who are smoking would be attracted to something that may be culturally acceptable. Um, they're certainly into high-tech devices and electronic devices as a substitute for more primitive products. And the e-cigarettes, I would think, would be attractive on those grounds. What would you say, uh, what parts of the world have been pretty successful in recent years in getting more of its smokers to kick the habit? Uh, there's been a lot of success in England with uh, promotion of e-cigarettes. There's been a lot of success in Japan with promotion of another kind of electronic smokeless product called Heat Not Burn. Uh, the, the brand in Japan is known as ICOS, but it's not available yet in the United States. But what is available in terms of uh, electronic cigarettes in the United States uh, could and should fill that purpose. All right, Dr. Joel Nitzkin, we appreciate your insight. Thanks for joining us.